Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and oh boy, can Fisher make a catchy tune with basic sounds, which we're going to be looking at today. Now, again, these sounds aren't super basic, as they all are going to have something about them which makes defines what the sound sounds like. But what I mean by basic is just going to be no fancy wavetables, no FM, just traditional analog waves. That being said, guys, if you want to support the channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com. Check out the Deceiver sound sets if you're looking for sounds in this sort of range of tech house. And with that being said, let's get started with this video. Just feels tight. Now, the first sound I want to look at is the bass, as I feel like this is where a lot of people are going to ask, how is the bass so fat in the track? How does Fisher get his fat bass lines? Bass lines and tech cows are going to revolve around the traditional analog wavetables, which in Serum, if you go into your basic shapes, um, this is probably going to be majority of the stuff you're using. The thing is, from here, you really have to know how to program it in order to get something fat. So the bass we're going to be making is going to sound like this. Okay, and then from there, we can look at the frequency response of it, which is going to be very similar to Fisher's. So here I have a, pretty much a rip off YouTube of Fisher's track, which I recorded into Ableton. I don't know if that's illegal or not, but whatever. It's sampling purposes. And as you can see, when we hear his track, the drop, you can kind of see how that low end of his is. It's just so rounded, so juicy and meaty. A lot of times in most Tech House tracks, what you will see is that we're going to have this here, but then we're going to kind of fall out and then come up here. So we sort of have like a smiley face. But in Fisher's tracks, it seems like we have more of a smirk, like a... Um, and I think that's the reason why it sounds so fat. So ways to program this, obviously, is you can mix the tra uh, the bass to be a lot more mid-low heavy. Obviously, the 200, 100 to 200 hertz area is heavy. So when I made this bass, obviously, I wanted to kind of emulate that. And we got pretty close with the kick. We're going to get something a lot more rounded if we were to put it. So in order to make these sort of bass lines here, we're going to kind of go a little bit over how to make it. So first off, like I said, most Tech House tracks will stick with the basic shapes. And the reason for that is that the moment you go into spectral and you start going into fancy wavetables and sometimes even FM, the low end, you, you sacrifice low end to get more upper harmonics and whatnot. And it sounds more interesting, but you don't get that fatness. So if you're trying to get fat basses, kiss, keep it simple shithead uh or whatever you want to say so i've taught this before in an old video where i kind of dissected some of fisher's old sounds but i swear to god this man is what he does we're going to grab a square and a saw combination from there we're going to route them into a filter a low pass and or remove the top end that we don't really want from there now from there you can kind of see this is the traditional sort of bass that we see as you can see, it's kind of like more rounded here and then it starts to fall out. But in order to get that very meaty, meaty one, we utilize this saw here in order to bring in those upper harmonics. Because if it's just a square, we're going to have valleys of death that Frodo probably walked through in Lord of the Rings. Which I'm not a fan of that. So we use the saw layered an octave up to cover those. And we're going to bring it up. And now we're starting to get there. Now from here, we're going to utilize this filter and pull it back and add a bit of resonance. Now the resonance is going to add a boost, obviously, at the cutoff point. And from there, we're starting to kind of get more of an equilibrium between the lows and the mid lows. We can go even further to the right to control the upper harmonics. And there we go. Now from here, we're going to saturate. And if you haven't watched my video on why your tech house tracks sound thin, just like you, uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, this is why. So we're going to tube saturate this. And as we do this, you're going to notice that we start to add more upper harmonics. That just means frequencies up here. It sounds smarter to say it that way. Uh, so don't worry. <laughs> and then we're just going to, again, utilize a post filter. And then from there, we're going to get this back. And from there, you can kind of play around. Let's say, okay, cool. I got the Fisher bass. But from there, you know, I want more upper harmonics and go for it. But if you want more deep, and you can play around with maybe adding here more resonance, no resonance, maybe more saw, play around with the face. As the face is very important, the reason we have these random faces down is so the face always starts at the same position. And when it comes with the bass, you really want to be 100% there. You always want 
100% results or money back guarantee vibes. Steve Duda makes sounds in Serum, money back guaranteed, six outs. Anyways, point being, that's how we create the bass. And from there, you can process further and master the track to get to where you need to be with that. Just feels tight. The next song we're looking at is going to be the quirky lead, which my recreation, I couldn't get the pitch bend at the beginning, but there is a lot to talk about this lead because we can all, I'm sure there's people out there talking a lot of smack like, eh, what the fuck, this track is like, what? But at the end of the day, there is stuff that goes on with the lead, which I find more intermediate, even beginner producers don't pay attention to. And that is going to deal with a bit of swing in terms of length of the notes. Okay, so this is how my recreation is going to sound like. Okay, uh, and the cool thing about it is if you hear the song, the way that it's played, again, going back to this, newbie producers are going to do something like this where everything has the same length, so then it's going to sound like... That sounds kind of lame and not filled with life with fizz. Sponsored? No. Um, so the idea here is, is that when you hear the sound, you can kind of hear how there's certain like... There's change in the length of the notes. As you can see, these guys get elongated more to create this sort of like tit -tit -tit kind of vibe to it versus the other one where it just sounded kind of flat and no tiene chiste, Frankie. That just means that there's nothing about it like that stands out. And, and it's something very simple. Now, creating these kind of leads, we can kind of go about it in different ways, but it is a saw. And if you're going to learn sound design and you don't want to learn too much, I think recognizing what a sound is, like a saw or a square, and their roles in, in the sound design of dance music uh, is huge because if you want to make a lead that's going to work 100% of the time you start off with a saw there's the saw is so harmonic like literally it's a beautiful sound and we, and you can make it sound beautiful like Armin Van Buren or you can make it sound quirky and drunk like Fisher did uh, okay so what we're going to do here is just going to initialize this so we're going to go with the default saw go down maybe two octaves because we want to be at the right octave tone From there, there's two possibilities here that he could have done. One, it could be a high pass. Or two, a band pass. And I'm a huge fan of the band pass, so. But most likely it was the latter. It was a high pass. But I'm going to go with this. This is what I decided to stick with for the tutorial. We're going to add here a bit of just mono legato. And then we're going to kind of make this sound a lot punchier by messing with the ADSR settings, attack, decay, sustain, and release. Uh, and all I'm doing here is lowering the sustain like this so. and then maybe lower that just to give it a little bit of dynamics in the beginning of it from here we're gonna add a bit of a decay to this and pull it back like so and it's just very fast now we can go reverse which creates this sort of like kind of effect which you're hearing a lot of hard world track <laughs> god bless the man on an island retired or you can go to the right and add punch by using uh, a very low decay value so yeah high pass i think is the one to go with you guys okay from there we kind of get the set and we can then put distortion aq out the lows Maybe not too much of thinning it. If you're in doubt, just always add reverb. It's like a, an anxious thing to do as a sound designer. If it don't sound 100% there, you add reverb in hopes that it will mask that. But from there, the sound is pretty much done. Uh, but the thing here is, is that, again, uh, once you start to go, you can kind of change the different saws, and that might... And not, not that one. That one's just too subby. But the idea is, is that, again, every synth's going to have a tone. So if you use Serum, and we could probably get closer. But then if you use, uh, uh, again, Diva, we don't know. But there's always going to be a change in tone. For instance, if I go to the Juno and apply. There's a slight change in tone. So from there, the characteristics of the sounds are there. And that's my excuse why it doesn't sound 100%. But I think, you know, if my son got a 90% on the test, it's still a fucking A. Now, my favorite sound in this track is actually going to be in the break, and 
again it's a more basic sound in the extent of a sound designer kind of that's my job what i do for a living but it doesn't take away from the fact that it just sounds really nice <laughs> Okay, I don't know if those are the right notes at the end there, but the sound is going to be this. And making this one is was a pain in the butt until I realized it was a plus 7. Now, the plus 7 trick here, when we're going to put it in the oscillator, all it means is if I'm playing, let's say, an A, I'm going to be playing the E with this oscillator, which creates this really nice... And I really like the sound, but the way that they use it is a lot more filtered. So it sounds more like for the break, you don't want it to be yeah, so they use this to create a lot of tension and just gives a nice mystical vibe as Fisher dances through the through the lake of beautiful women in the gym. But um, this is how we're going to make it. So we can kind of see that here and then we can kind of talk a lot little tips from here. Just again, we're going to plus seven this. And then we're just going to get it right octave, usually having this an octave and this high gives a really nice dark vibe. And then from there, there is a bit of noise that's layered on top, which I find kind of, again, something that not an amateur producer would do. And it's there just to add something. But we can also add it ourselves with a direct out. Okay, from there, mono legato. Okay, and then from there, it's literally all effects. We're going to get rid of the low end. But the low end still stays because you might be going, say, I want to just get rid of that. And you get that. But the thing is, is that this is going to really influence the dirtiness of this song after we once we cue two and put a bit of reverb. Okay, from there, we can maybe a little lower. A little bit of resonance. Now, during the, the break, there is a lot more that goes on with this sound. And something that happens, which I find kind of like um, unique, is the sense that we do have this thing where it sounds like this. It does that now and then. That little resonance sweep. So from there, it could be done in various ways. Like you can automate the decay up. And then just have it do this. Because that way, decay down. And then you can kind of automate that in, which is really cool. But the secret to this sound is obviously going to be that plus seven that adds a lot to it. And I really like it. So again, just there. Kind of move this down. Just feels tight. So if I had to get graded on this, I'd probably rate myself probably a C or a B for this sound. It, I don't think it's 100% there, but it's around the same ballpark. Like the teacher will be like, you read the spark notes and I, I respect that, but I don't respect you getting an A with that. <laughs> no, but at the end of the day, this sound was just very hard to make because there's a lot of multiple layers that happen here. And again, while the song might be very simple, there's certain sections of it where it just gets really kind of hard to kind of get it exactly the same but we can kind of dissect what's going on in the climax of the song which is the last drop so in the last drop we're gonna have something that sounds like okay and then this is where it gets tough because now you have another sound coming up which is not exact again but it is around the same ballpark and then there's another sound okay and i think i gotta automate that in but together And then it just goes back to obviously the the little quirky uh, synth, which is yeah like the. I think we added too much pitch envelope on that one, guys. But again, okay, so we'll talk about first this sound because I get asked a lot by people how to make this. All the time. Okay, so the way we're going to program this is just we're going to initialize it, right? So again, going back, basic shapes. I've been using saws and squares this whole tutorial, and there's nothing wrong with that, guys. Honestly, if you can make six sounds, this is all you really need. You can do a lot with these guys. So what we're going to do is just layer a square. It might be an H pulls one. Who knows? But we're going to go square. We're going to use a filter, wrap both of them in, and then we're just going to put an LFO on this at a 16 rate. From there, we're going to turn trick, so it always starts at the beginning, and then we're going to go more for a saw look. Okay, and then from there, there's also an um, automation that goes on on the cutoff, which we have applied here through Ableton. You're going to see it kind of open up. Okay, from there. And then from there, we can also put it on the level if desired, but we'll leave it like that.
And then from there, just obviously EQ. And then from uh, Super 2. And then we can play with the slope. Okay, and then from there, it might be just that we went too high up. So we can kind of fine tune this guy here so it comes back down. And that helps us create that. Let's mono legato it. And let's play around with it. And there's various, the combinations. The other thing you can do is also put this on the level, which will create something like this. But then from there, you're also going to have to automate your levels here. So in that scenario, what I recommend you do is if you want to automate more than one thing and you want to make it easy on yourself. When I was a butcher, when I was working 16, work smarter, not harder. Um, you can route it here, route it here with a mod and route this there. So that way... And that's pretty clutch. So that's why Steve Duda put macros in there. All right. So that's going to be one of the sounds. The next sound, again, is going back to that plus seven. Uh, which we utilize here with two sauce. One and down an octave, one up. And there is a bit of the two mint going on. So it sounds like I could have just done one and one, to be honest. There is a bit of, again, LFO, same idea, applied on that cutoff so that we get a bit of movement as it goes up, but it's not opening up all the way. That is the thing. Uh, that's the thing there. Just kind of adding a bit of movement to the sound. We are detuning here via fine. So the sound stays down the center. Before that, I was just doing it for the hell of it. And then we're kind of um, putting a bit of distortion. With a bit of a boost here with a high pass on the mid lows as the sound in the track sounds like it has it. EQ and reverb and really that's it. But I think the important thing here is the plus seven trick with uh, again. Doo -doo 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 From there, there was this last sound that sounded kind of weird in there. And the bass is also present at the same time. But it sounds something like this. And it sounds like it was just more put as a layer to fill out that section. They probably did it and they're like, oh, we're missing a bit of mid lows. So let's add a saw or like a, a Reese like there. Uh, but it's just put together with it so that. Okay. And again, I fucked that part up in the beginning, but you get the idea of that. And that's going to be the climax of it. And the last sound we're going to look at is going to be the effect shot that you can hear in the beginning of the drop or the first drop. And then I think it disappears on the second one and it comes back on the outro. But it's going to sound something like something of sorts. Okay, guys. Now, I did have to say on the final payout synth, the ending of it sounded bad. But again, I'm just kind of going fast through here trying to kind of show the theory behind these sounds. So you guys understand how to make them. Uh, I when i first showed it i just put a bit more effort into getting the sound right but since i'm recording a video i gotta be fast i want to make it too long all right so in creating any sort of laser or wiggly sound like this lfos are your friend to get something of sort so what we're gonna do here and again let me just make sure i knew what the hell i'm doing here so that way uh we don't get it mixed up uh so we're gonna have a saw where we're gonna route our lfo to it like so down at two octave and we're gonna have that 16 so now we get this sound. The thing is now we can turn this sound into what we heard by utilizing a filter, putting a bit of resonance and also moving the filter cutoff. From there we can mess around with the shape. And we can also put it to the level. And now we have the wiggly sound or laser, whatever you want to call this. I call it like a <laughs> kind of sound, but from there we have to make it wide some way. So one way is to use chorus, which, you know, gives a bit of a detuned effect so we gotta lower down the rate the other way is just to make this two voices detuned a little and that's another way or we can utilize the Haas effect which is what they might have used where you're gonna have the left be one and the right be ten and up The other thing we can also do is do a bit of an auto pan instead, which I find is the best kind of the way to kind of get stuff wide. We're going to use LFO2 for this and we're going to kind of hold shift, click up, create a square. 
and now you can see how that sounds a lot cleaner uh, as we do it this way versus using the Haas. So again, just little techniques for you to kind of go like, maybe I should go this way or this way. There's a place for everything. And then from there, it's just really playing at the right octave that you want to be at and shaping this. You can do, or you could do, or you could do, or you could do, for some reason, you want to make like a slow ass growl. And you could also do that in theory and put a bit of this. Uh, there you go but those are how you're going to make these kind of wiggly sounds and that's about it so i believe those are the big sounds that i heard in fisher's track that i really like that i warrant people would probably ask me like how to make this sound send and whatnot uh but i hope you enjoyed the video guys this was the sounds of fisher's just feels tight kinda well i'll say kind of here not in the title but kind of the sounds so you get an idea how they're made and if, if you get anything out of this video one how to make any of these sounds and two the fact that you don't need complex sounds with like crazy amounts of shit to make a good song. It's all about the idea and what sounds you use to do that. And in all honesty, if you, even if you look at David Guetta and Morden's Future Rave, basic ass saw, just processed differently, a bit heavier, playing different melodies. But at the end of the day, if you look deep down inside in that saw, it probably sounds like this at one point in its life. Peace.